Hi there. Welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guy, bringing you communication tips and strategies that will boost your business. And I don't do this on my own. I do it with a highly qualified guest. And coming to us today from Columbia, Missouri, is Alex Dimchuk. He's a former Southeastern Conference quarterback for the Missouri Tigers, and he graduated from the University of Missouri with a degree in communication and a minor in business. Quite a good combination there. Alex is a sought-after keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and author who challenges businesses, schools, and teams to maximize their impact. Alex is the author of three books. He's the co-founder of Streamline Books, a company that helps individuals become authors. And there's more. He is also the founder of Speaker School, a company that helps individuals become keynote speakers. Additionally, Alex is the host of three podcasts where he interviews top leaders, authors, and speakers. Alex's mission is to help people increase their performance, enhance their leadership, and maximize their potential. Some of his past clients include the Cincinnati Reds, U.S. Space Force, Edward Jones, USI Insurance, and there are many others. When Alex isn't speaking, he is spending time with his wife, Erin, and their children in Columbia, Missouri. And I know that you will join me now in welcoming Alex to the Biz Communication Show. Hello, Alex. Bill, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. I've been hearing amazing things about your show. So it's, uh, I feel like it's a hard, it's a high bar for me to set here with all the guests you've had and all the content you've added. So it's, it's an honor to be here. Well, I appreciate that compliment and, and I return it tenfold because you have accomplished so much both as an athlete and as a speaker and as a consultant. I mentioned that you graduated from University of Missouri with degree majors in business and communication. Many times when we look back over our college or university curriculum, we are able to pinpoint one or two courses which were so meaningful for us that they have an impact on the rest of our lives and our careers. What what might be one or two courses that you remember very favorably and very beneficially? Now, Bill, are you talking about the classes that I attended or the, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, I'm, I, kidding. I'm assuming you attended, yes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, Mizzou was a great, edu- I loved it. And actually it's the number one journalism school in the country. And so it's a lot of my friends are now working at big networks doing journalism. But I went the route of communication and then minor in business, like you said, but it was actually a class my senior year that had the biggest impact on my life. And I think is still making waves in, today for me. Uh, and and my, my professor's name was Dr. Maza. I remember it to this day. And it was a public speaking class. And I remember being in that class and there was 27 of us in the class. So it was a smaller, intimate setting. And we, we got this assignment where uh, Dr. Maza, he said, hey, by next Friday, you have to create a essentially like a made up business and then present to the class about it. And he's like, whoever goes first gets like an automatic at least 80 percent. So like I like raised my hand. I'm like, you know, I'm not smart enough to whatever. So I'm like, I'm going to take the easy, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave it up to chance. So I, I took, you know, I was first and I'm like, you know what? I need to get creative with this assignment. And so what I did was there was, you know, with all the other 26 students in the class, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get them involved in this somehow. And so the, the day shows for up to the, you know, the presentation, it's a day where I'm presenting. And what I did is I had a PowerPoint and all 26 people without me asking them, you know, I, I somehow included like a picture from them, like maybe a semi embarrassing picture from them in high school in my slideshow. So, so Bill, imagine like, you know, someone shows up to this class, maybe late, they walk in they had a late night or whatever. And they show up to this class in the morning. All of a sudden I start presenting this fake business and I'm like, my director of operations is Bill. And like, I put up a picture of you from high school and you like, you know, and so it was just like a really fun, like, and the press was like, I've never seen anyone do this. And I think it was in that moment that I realized, well, for one, 
everyone else in the class besides one other person was like dreading the class. Like they had to take it for the major and they were just like, I do not want to do this. I do not want to share. And it was in that moment where I was like, in a weird way, I enjoyed this. And why, why did I enjoy that? And I think that's what I didn't even know public speaking was an industry. I thought it was just something you did, you know, and, but now years later, I can look back to that moment and say, wow, that was fun. And I, I still get to have that kind of fun today when I speak. And I think to answer your question, that was by far the most impactful class semester and, 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 and project I had to do in school because it, it forced me to get out of my comfort zone and actually pursue this thing. And I had no idea that I'd be doing speaking full time in my future. And so it's just crazy how things work out like that. I commend you for several items there. One is your creativity. You didn't just get up and uh, give a spiel, but you made it exceptionally interesting. And secondly, I certainly commend you for engaging the audience. I know as a professional speaker, you do that. And many times, Alex, when I was a keynote speaker for an, an occasion, I would make sure that the chairman of the organization would give me the names of four or five people that I could email, that I could call, that I could interview ahead of time. And one of the, the factors that I, I did at first, I would quote them. And then it finally dawned on me, hey, you know, as a long time ago, comedian Jimmy Durante said, everybody likes to get in on the act. So I would say to them after interviewing them, well, you know, what you've said is good. And I, I guess I could say it in my words, but it'd be so much better if, if I call on you during the presentation. This did a couple of things that made them more a part of it. And of course, you and I know the toughest thing or the biggest challenge we have in trying to get an audience involved is to get that first person <laughs> to, to participate. So I already had three or four people that would participate. I am quite sure that you got a high grade for, for that uh, presentation, right? Well, Bill, all I know is I passed the class. So I don't, I don't know what, what it was, but no, it was, it was a great, great class. And I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm literally taking note of that for after this podcast, what you just said, that's so important of like, everyone wants to be part of the act and that is good man so thank you for just sharing that with me and i have to say bill i don't know if you get this a lot but does anyone ever tell you that you and zig ziglar sound similar <laughs> <laughs> you mean before or after his death well you know take it however you want it to but i think man i just i you know as a high school or college student and even now i occasionally listen to his his tapes or his you know whatever platforms he's on and it's like and even his son, Tom Ziggler, listen to his podcast every once in a while. And I don't know, man, you have that. I guess that's why you have a communication podcast because you're a good communicator. But um, when you when you talked about that, I was like, is am I talking with Zig right now? But uh... <laughs> I, I, I when I was a member of the National Speakers Association and attending conferences, I got to meet Zig one time. And really, we both grew up in Mississippi. I didn't know him then. But when I met him, I said, uh, Zig, it's nice to meet you. I'm from Mississippi, too. And in that great drawl of his, he said, you just bragging. <laughs> <laughs> and I've read Zig's autobiography. There, there are many great pieces of advice that that he has given to speakers. And it's, it's uh, no surprise that the National Speakers Association has awards named after him. And those of us who had an opportunity to, to know him personally certainly learned something. Well, one more question now would be, I often hear as I'm talking with people about sports and I'm a big sports fan, every now and then somebody will say to me, you know, well, well those football players, they're just a, they're just a bunch of, of uh, brawny guys they they don't have any any brains to operate by it's not a smart game speak to that tell us please what part communication plays how communication among the team and the coach how important those are and essential for for winning oh it, it, bill it's everything and and you look at some of the top I think so much of it goes back to coaching, right? And so many of the top coaches in America, 
when it comes you look at college football or even the NFL or any sport, like the way that coaches are able to connect with their players. Like you look at a guy like Dabo Sweeney, the head coach of Clemson. I've had the chance to be around him, meet him. Amazing guy. He's built an amazing culture. And so much of what they do revolves around communication. I mean, he takes the players out before the season and they go to a graveyard and he tells his players like, what, like, this is where we'll all end up. Like, what, what do you want your life to look like? <laughs> and he does things in his program that, that is so intentional. And I think uh, so often to your point, there are these stigmas, you know, of, you know, athletes or whatever, but there are so many areas of my life, like these d- core disciplines that I learned as a, as a college athlete and being broken down to then be brought back up to learn, to go through the process. I, I mean, to this day, I, I mean, I feel like I'm always uh, making sure my phone is silenced because our head coach was always no cell phones in team meetings. Right. So it's like the way that um, I was communicated to as a coach, even from a young age, I think there's such an opportunity um, to communicate to make a positive impact or on on the flip side, a a negative impact. I think of coaches in my life, unfortunately, who missed the boat, who I remember quitting baseball because I had a coach who in in my middle school years just was not a great person. And I look back and I have some regret. I probably shouldn't have quit just because of that, but it comes back to the way he communicated, the way he demeaned the players. And I think, I think it speaks to almost this stewardship mentality of if you've been given a gift or a blessing to communicate, right? Are you using that? Are you using that to lift others up or tear others down? And I think um, you nailed it when you said, you know, what is it? What does communication mean in sports? It's everything. And then that's just talking about the coaches. Think about the players, you know, football in particular. You got 11 guys who are counting on each other and large men are looking to, you know, I was a walk-on quarterback. Um, I I tell people, uh, you know, when people ask me, oh, what do you play at, at Mizzou? I said, well, you know, technically I was actually, a, uh, my position was tailback because when I tried to get playing time on the field, you know, I'd run out in the field, try to get playing time. Our head coach would say, son, you get your tail back here right now. So I tell people I was a tailback, but uh, no, I actually played quarterback. Well put, well put. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like uh, so much of it rely, relies on communication, on building trust. And, and that is ultimately... Uh, what some of the core of, I'm sure your messages, but also my message when I go speak to these teams, it's like coming out of the last few years we've come out of, are you being intentional to, you know, not just communicate, but to communicate, to connect. I was just at an event last week, two weeks ago, sorry, at Hobby Lobby and David Green, who started Hobby Lobby, an amazing guy. He had John Maxwell speak. And, And I'm sure if you've been around Zig Ziglar, you've been around John Maxwell, you've heard him speak and he is just amazing. And he just talks about, you know, his new book is called High, The High Road, High Road Leadership. He says, you know, a high road leader is someone who brings people together, you know. And I think so often we forget that in leadership. It's like, how can I climb up this way? Or how can I get to this accomplishment? But it's like, are you communicating in a way that other people are not only resonate, but they, they can empathize with, but they also want to rally around you and say, hey, I see, you know, a great example, speaking of Zig, Zig Ziglar, my, one of my mentors and co-authors, John Gordon, he met Zig before he passed away. And he and John actually had the chance to speak at an event. And he said Zig was in the front row and he was taking notes when he was in his 80s. Or How about that? And, and John always talks about that. And it's so humbling to be like around a person like that or even you, Bill. It's like the way you're adding value to communicators. It's like it, John, uh, John Maxwell said something at this Hobby Lobby event. He said, when you're able to, to retire and be done, like when you get to the point where you're you're able to do that is the exact time that you can't be ready to give it all up and retire and be done. And because his point was just like, you're just getting started. You know, he's like, I'm 77 years old and I'm I'm laser focused on what I want to accomplish. So that was a long answer. But I think so much of it just comes back to the communication. Um, yes. When there's a void in the communication. That's where things fall apart when there's a void and, and there's misconception and there's um, ambiguity. And so I think communicating to connect is so, so important. Uh, your, your illustration about Dabo Sweeney, you and I both know that in your basic speech, speak, uh, speech class and in 
every speaking instruction since then, you've heard about the value of visual aids, taking guys to a graveyard. <laughs> that's, that's a strong visual aid. And I want to add one to it before we take a break here for a minute. And the one I want to add to it is that Irk Russell was a long time, very colorful assistant coach with the University of Georgia, where I where I taught speech communication. And Irk, uh, it well, was- hold, hold, hold on, Bill, we, we didn't we didn't talk about this yet. You're a Georgia Bulldog and I'm a Mizzou Tiger. Well, I, I didn't uh, want to create any f- friction here. And I'll say this, your, your Missouri Tigers have given the Bulldogs uh, some some strong games in the last few well, years. Well, you're kind to say that. It's been strong games, but you guys end up on top. So you don't have to be so humble about it. So You and, you and I are still friends. Okay. That's right. We're still friends. But keep, keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> well, Eric Russell called the team together in a locker room. And he had a big burlap bag with him. And they wondered what was in there. And Irk Russell put, pulls out a rattlesnake, which he has tethered. But he pulls it out a rattlesnake and throws it on the floor. And the rattlesnake snake starts hissing. All the players duck for cover. And they're, they're scared to death. And Irk looks at them and says, I just want you guys to know that what I just showed you is not nearly as deadly as the drugs some of you are using. Wow. Now, is that a great visual aid? <laughs> oh, man, that is a mic drop moment, man. That's incredible. Yes. Okay. Uh, we will be back in just a second, and we'll have a couple of minutes to talk about your speaking career. Be right back for that. Do you wish you felt confident about giving speeches? Do you want to deal with difficult people constructively? And what about becoming more persuasive in sales? Then keep listening now to Dr. Bill Lampton. He spent 20 years in management, so he knows the communication skills you need for success. I urge you to call the Biz Communication Guy today for a no-cost but very valuable 30-minute discussion about your communication challenges. Call now, 678-316-4300. Again, that's 678-316-4300. Alex, you and I are having so much fun that I know if you're willing, you're going to be a return guest. There is so much for us I, to cover. Hey, if you'll have a Mizzou Tiger back, I, I would accept. But uh, This Bulldog you know. will do that, yes. <laughs> I want to ask you, and we have only a couple of minutes now, but tell us, please, as a professional speaker, what you try to accomplish with audiences. What's your your core message, your core mission? That's a great question. And honestly, you said something earlier that I picked up on that was very key of having everyone be a part of something that if you do a speech without doing that, um, good luck. (laughs) You know, I think about, I get the chance to speak to a lot of high schoolers, middle schoolers. And the thing that people have to understand when you speak to a group that young, what what essentially you are competing against you are competing against their cell phones, right? You are competing against YouTube or TikTok or whatever social media they're using. Like when, when you show up, you are competing against those things. And so my encouragement um, to myself or to any communicator is, is you, you have to bring something that is not just about you. It's not just about your expertise and your, th- your abilities, but it's how are you going to move the audience to action. How are you going to move them to action? And so my, one of my, like I mentioned earlier, John Gordon, uh, he, he mentioned something that I've always lived by. And he says, every good speech has three things. It has principle, story, and application. And, you know, first, what is the, what is the principle that I want to, to convey? What is a principle that I want? Like, what is a, you know, for me in my book, uh, the sale, it's a, it's a fable about integrity. So one of the principles is integrity builds trust, right? And so, that's a, that's a principle, right? Now a story, what's a story that is, is, is eye catching or fun or funny, or like the snake story you just told. It's like, we love stories. We, we love, love stories. we love stories, right? So story. And then the most important is how then does your audience apply it? How do they take those things and actually like do something in their life about it? And I think that's a focus for me is like, okay, to your point on having, uh, you know, fun things. It's like, 
I will bring juggling balls. I will juggle as part of an illustration. I have a flag that I, there's all these different little things that I use because I know the average person shows up to an event or a company required event and they're going, oh my goodness, I have to listen to our speaker. And Why so, do I have to listen to this guy? <laughs> exactly. And so if they come in with that mentality, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to show up and, and deliver value. And I think, um, again, I'm coming off this conference with John Maxwell and he just said, to earn people's respect in the marketplace, you have to provide value. And I think that's so important is like, can you as a communicator and through your business and through all the things you're doing, can you provide value? And I can already tell you, Bill, like you have already added value to me just in these few minutes. And I'm not just saying that every place you go, I think the question needs to become is how am I adding value to someone? And so I think when you ask that question, as you speak and communicate, you're going to find yourself a much more effective communicator um, because you're really, you're, you're, here's a good point. Here's a good uh, thing I want to bring up. Um, people say, Alex, do you get nervous before you speak? And when I first started, I did, I was like, you know, I'd be like, oh my gosh, am I going to say the right thing? But everything changed when I realized that it's not about me. It's about me serving the audience. And so if I have something, even if it's just one thing that I have to share, that could yes. help, if I could help one person in the audience uh, make a change in their life, maybe a mindset, a limiting belief, if there's one thing that happens, then me showing up that day is worth it. It's worth, you know, um, and so I don't get nervous because now it's like, okay, now my eyes are on the audience. of like, all right, who's that person that I know needs to hear what I'm about to share. And it just drives you to do more of those because I think when that's your mentality, it, it changes the way that you, the way you speak and communicate. Yes. And I've often said that there are three things you can concentrate on. You can concentrate on yourself. You can concentrate on your message. You can concentrate on your audience. And one of those is a killer. Don't do that. Don't concentrate on yourself. Alex, uh, the time has just zipped on by. An old saying, time flies when you're having fun. This has been not only entertaining, but highly educational. And just keep your calendar handy because you'll get another invite. I know that there are people who have viewed us, listened to us, on YouTube or on the podcast, who will want your contact information? So please give that to us. Yes, sir. So uh, alexspeaking.com is my website. And we didn't really talk about this much, but just to say, I know a lot of communicators want to be able to share their story. And so Streamline Books is my company where we help people write and publish their book. And so uh, writemybooks.com is our website. If anyone's like, you know what, I, I've been wanting to share a story, um, we would love to help you. Um, yeah, just create an awesome book that conveys your message and your your impactful stories. So, yeah, Bill, I really appreciate this platform. And just to connect with you, man, hopefully, hopefully we'll be seeing each other at a Mizzou, Georgia bowl game. Uh, uh, well, bowl game. Uh, I don't know about that, but some kind of game, uh, you know, in the next year or two, we'll see. But uh, hopefully we'll be seeing each other at a football game um, here in Columbia or or your way. I look forward to that. I look forward to that. Okay, now that you've given your contact information, I'm happy to give mine my YouTube channel where this video appears is Bill Lampton, PhD. And when you go there, be sure you hit the subscribe button. My website, since I'm the biz communication guy, my website is biz, B I Z, bizcommunicationguy.com. And then, of course, I would love to talk with you about your communication challenges and needs. So give me a call at 678-316-4300. Alex, you're a terrific guest. You're a great addition to the communication arena. Uh, how would you pull together what we've said in 30 seconds? Wow. There's a lot, a lot of things we've covered that are all very important in my opinion. But I would just say not only be yourself. Um, but what in, in your business or your life or with your family, what would it look like as a communicator in the marketplace to say, how am I adding value every single day? And no one's perfect. Um, I'm not, you're not, no one is. But I think if you ask that question in your communication, how am I adding value? How am I serving others? I think you'll be pretty happy with your your results of communication. And I think even maybe more importantly, other people will be pleased with it because they'll be positively impacted um, by the work that you're doing, by the perspectives that you share. And so, Bill, uh, uh, that, that's, that's a takeaway for me. And I think 
hopefully I'll be seeing you uh, uh, on the other side of the hedges in Athens at some point of the game. So that that's another good takeaway for me. So, and and we will speak to each other cordially there. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we'll keep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Well, thanks so much to Alex for being with us today. Thanks to my podcast pro producer, uh, Mike Stewart, the internet audio guy who has been my technical and marketing guru for uh, over 25 years. I thank all of you who joined us on the video and on the podcast, encourage you to be with us again. I'm Bill Lampton, the biz communication guy, thanking you again and looking forward to the next time with you.